Let's move to the modern day and we'll return to history, maybe 67 and other important moments, but let's look to today in the recent months, uh, October 7th. Let me ask sort of a pointed question. Was October 7th attacks by Hamas on Israel genocidal? Was it, was it an act of ethnic cleansing? Just so we lay out the moral calculus that we are engaged in. I don't, maybe you was. The, the, problem, sure. the problem with October 7th is this. The Hamas fighters who, who um, invaded southern Israel um, were sent, ordered to murder, rape, and do all the nasty things that they did. And they killed some 1,200 Israelis that day and uh, uh, abducted them, uh, as we know, something like 250 um, uh, civilians, mostly civilians, also some soldiers, um, took them back to Gaza, dungeons in Gaza. Um, but they were motivated, not just by the words of their current leader in the Gaza Strip, but by their ideology, which is embedded in their charter from eight, 1988, if I remember correctly. And that charter is genocidal. It says that the Jews must be eradicated, basically, from um, the land of Israel, from Palestine. Uh, the Jews are described there as sons of apes and pigs. Uh, the Jews are a base people, uh, killers of prophets, and they should not exist in Palestine. It doesn't say that they necessarily should be murdered all around the world, the Hamas charter, but certainly the Jews should be eliminated from Palestine. And this is the driving ideology um, behind uh, the massacre of the Jews on October 7th, which brought down on the Gaza Strip. And I think with the intention by the Hamas uh, of the Israeli counteroffensive, because they knew that that counteroffensive would result in many Palestinian dead because uh, the, the Hamas uh, fighters and their weaponry and so on were embedded in the population in Gaza. And they hoped to benefit from this in the eyes of world public opinion as Israel chased these Hamas people and their ammunition dumps and so on and killed lots of Palestinian civilians in the process. All of this was understood by uh, Sinwar, by the head of the Hamas, and he strived for that. But initially, he wanted to kill as many Jews as he could uh, uh, in the border areas uh, uh, around the Gaza Strip. I'll respond directly to the points you made, and then um, I'll leave it to Norm to bring in the historical context. That um, Hamas charter is from the 90s, I think. 1988. 1988, so it's from the 80s. Um, I think your characterization of that charter as um, anti-Semitic is indisputable. Okay. I think your um, characterization of that charter is genocidal is off the mark. It's implicit. Um, and more importantly, that charter has been superseded by a new charter. It in no, fact, has been, well, there is, there is a- There is no new charter. There is there a is new charter. There is an explanation, a statement they made in a a, a 2000 statement. and something, 18. 2018, in, supposedly clarifying things which are in the charter, in, but it doesn't actually step back from what in, the charter in, says. Eliminate Israel, eliminate the Jews from the land of Israel. In, in 2018, the Hamas charter, if we look at the current version of the charter- It's not a call to whether, charter. Whether, whether You're you, calling it a charter, it wasn't. It, it makes, the only thing called the charter is what was issued in 1988 by Yassin himself. Anyway, it, make, it makes a clear distinction um, between um, Jews and Zionists in 2018. Now, you can choose to dismiss it, believe it, it's sincere, it's insincere, uh, whatever. Insincere I, is the, probably the right word. Secondly, I'm really unfamiliar um, with fighters who consult these kinds of documents uh, before, no, before they go on. No, they're education uh, system. In the kindergarten, they're told, kill the Jews. They, they practice with uh, make-believe guns and uniforms when this they're five years old in the kindergartens of the Hamas. At the instruction in Gaza, of the Commissioner in General of UNRWA, right? I didn't say that. I said the Hamas has kindergartens and summer camps in which they train okay. to kill Jews, children secondly, aged five and six. Secondly, you keep, you keep saying Jews, um, to which I would respond. They that, use the word Jews. To which I would respond that Hamas does not have a record of deliberately targeting Jews who are not Israelis. And in fact, it also doesn't have a record of deliberately targeting either Jews or Israelis outside Israel and Palestine. So, you know, all this talk of 
Um, Unlike the Hezbollah, which has targeted, well, we're talking targeted about, Jews outside, we're talking outside about, Palestine. We're talking about October 7th and Hamas. If you'd also like to speak about Hezbollah, let's let's get to that separately, if you, if you don't mind. Um, so again, um, genocidal, well, if, if that term is going to be discussed, my first response would be, let's talk about potentially genocidal actions against Israelis rather than against Jews for the reasons that I just mentioned. And again, I find this constant conflation of, 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 of Jews, Israel, Zionism to be a bit disturbing. Secondly, I think um, there are uh, quite a few indications in the factual record that raise serious questions about um, the accusations of the genocidal intent and, and genocidal practice of what happened on October 7th. And my final point would be, I don't, I don't think I should take your, your word for it. I don't think you should take my word for it. I think what we need here is a proper, independent, international investigation. And the reason we need of that- what? Of genocide during this conflict, whether by uh, Palestinians on October 7th or Israel thereafter. And the reason that we need such an investigation is because Hamas is, there won't be any hearings on what Hamas did on October 7th at the International Court of Justice um, because the International Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide deals only states. With, with states and not with movements. I think the International Criminal Court, and specifically its current prosecutor, Karim Khan, lacks any and all credibility. He's been an absolute failure at his job. He's just been sitting on his backside for years on this file. And I think um, uh, I would point out that Hamas has called for independent investigations of all these allegations. Israel has categorically rejected any international investigation, of course, fully supported by the United States. Um, and, I, and I think what is required is to have credible investigations of these things, because I don't think you're going to convince me, I don't think I'm going to convince you, and this is two people sitting across the table well, from each other. No, there's certain things you don't even have to investigate. You know how many citizens, civilians died in the yes, October 7th assault. Yes, but that's not... You know that there are lots of allegations of rape. I don't know how persuaded you are of those. They did find bodies without heads, uh, which there, is... There uh, were no beheadings Islamic. of infants. There were, there were some beheadings, apparently. The Israelis didn't even claim that in the document they submitted before the ICJ. Go read what your government submitted. It never mentioned beheadings. Well, as far as I know, there I were some people it. who were beheaded. Yeah. But then, we could bring it up right you now. You also deny that there were rapes there. I didn't deny. I said I've not seen convincing evidence that confirms it. I've said that from day one, and I'll say it today, four and a half months later. Do you know that they killed eight or nine hundred civilians in their assault? Absolutely. Yes. That seems to me indisputable. Oh, okay. Well, I'm yes. glad and that you're conceding I've said something. That, I've said that from day one. Well, to be clear, you haven't. You did a debate. Um, I don't remember the talk show, but you seemed to imply that there was a lot of crossfire and that it might have been the IDF that I had killed said, a lot of... I said that there is no question because the names were published in Haaretz. There is no question that roughly of the 1,200 people killed, 800 of them were civilians. I 850. See, 850, fine. So I never said that, but then I said... No, we don't know exactly how they were killed, but 800 civilians killed, no, 850, no question there. And I also said on repeated occasions, there cannot be any doubt, in my opinion, as of now, with the available evidence, that Hamas was responsible for significant atrocities. And I made sure to include the plural. There's a lot of tricky language being employed here. Do you think of the There's 850? Tricky. It's called attaching value <clears throat> to words and not talking like a motor mouth. Okay. I am very careful about qualifying because that's okay, what language is for, about. That's great. Then let me just ask a clarifying question. Do you firmly believe that the majority of the 850 civilians were killed by Hamas? My view is even if it were half, 400 is a huge number by any reckoning, Why it's okay. Wait, you didn't. I said wait, even wait, if wait, 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 because, wait, because wait, Benny, because Professor Morris, I don't know. I agree with Muin Rabani. I'm not sure if he concedes 
the 400. I'll say. Why 400? Whoever, because I have. thought up the because, 400. Right. As I said. Of the 850 yeah, well, was slaughtered I'll, because, by Hamas. If so I may. Maybe no, a couple I, of individuals were killed I, in the Israeli I don't, action. I don't know. You're saying from Professor day one Morris, you believe Professor, this particular Professor thing, and you Morris, clearly don't. You clearly don't believe this from thing. You day don't. one, I see, You said no. people died. That's not no. controversial. No. Wait, okay. hold on, hold on. Uh, if I may, that's not Mr. controversial. Mr. Bunnell, Mr. Bunnell, I attach value to words. Yes, you've said that. When you I, value them, when you I was, them so yes, much. Mr. <laughs> Bunnell, please slow down the speech and attempt to listen. When I was explicitly asked by Pierce Morgan, I said there can be no question that Hamas committed, committed atrocities, atrocities heard this. on yes. October 7th. Seventh. If you want me to pin down a number, I can't do that. I didn't ask you to pin I down may, a number. You can listen to you what I'm saying. Ask no, my question is, okay. I'll ask, I'll ask a very no, precise question. Sorry, to you because excuse you're me. Not, it's, a very, under, it's a very easy question. If I question. understood your question correctly. My me. question is, do you think the majority of the people that were killed yes. on October 7th, the civilians were killed by Hamas, yes. or are we subscribing to the idea that the IDF killed hundreds, no, four or 500 uh, No, but let me, let me explain why that's a difficult question to answer. The total number of civilians killed was 800, 850. Mm -hmm. We know that Hamas is responsible um, probably for the majority of those killings. We also know that there were killings by Islamic Jihad. We also know- well, we're, we're bunching together the Islamic Jihad and the Hamas. So that's well, splitting his question hairs was now. Specifically no, but he means, about, he means no, the, it's the Raiders. I, he means the Raiders. I'm speaking, I'm speaking in opposition to the conspiracy theory that um, people like, do you prefer Norm or Professor Frankenstein, or what do you, I don't know what you're, how do you prefer Well, it's not a conspiracy theory. Because well, the, the conspiracy a, theory is the idea that the IDF killed the majority of them. It's not a conspiracy theory. And oh, then there's, the also, and there's no. also a theory that, um, as Norm pointed out on the show that he was on, that he thought that it was very strange that given how reputable uh, Israeli services are when it comes to sending ambulances, retrieving bodies, he thought it was very strange that that number was continually yeah, I, being yeah, adjusted. And do you know so why? So you say that in combination I, 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 with, well, I'm not sure how many were killed. Well, do you know the why the, the number, do you know why the number? went down. The number went down because the Israeli authorities were in were in possession of 200 corpses that were burned to a crisp that they assumed were Israeli um, Israelis who had been killed on October 7th. They later determined that these were in fact Palestinian fighters. Now how does a Palestinian fighter get burned to a crisp? No, you're mixing two things. Yeah, Some think of the question. bodies they didn't weren't able to identify, and eventually they dis ruled that some of them were actually Arab uh, marauders rather than Israeli victims. Some, a few of them, also of the Jews, were burnt to a crisp, and it took them time to work yes. this out. And they and came out initially with a s slightly higher figure, fourteen hundred dead, and eventually reduced it to twelve hundred yes, and, and dead is, Israelis. And the reason is that a proportion of Israeli civilians killed on October seventh. I don't believe it was a majority. We don't know how many. Um, some were killed in crossfire. Some were killed by um, uh, Israeli shell fire, helicopter fire, and so on. And um, uh, the majority were killed by Palestinians. And of that majority, um, we don't know. I mean, again, I, I understood your question as referring specifically to Hamas, which is why I tried to answer it that way. But if you meant generically Palestinians, yes. If you mean specifically Hamas, we don't have a clear breakdown of how. No, many I don't mean specifically Hamas, okay. but I just think when you use the word "some," that's doing a lot of heavy lifting. Who use some? That's fine, but some can mean anywhere from one percent to forty-nine percent. But we don't know. So the numbers here and the details are uh, interesting and important, almost from a legal perspective. But if we zoom out, the moral perspective: Are Palestinians from Gaza justified in violent resistance? Well, Palestinians have the right to resistance, Palestinian, that right includes the right to armed resistance. At the same time, armed resistance um, is subject to the laws of war. And there are very clear regulations um, that separate legitimate acts of armed resistance from acts of armed resistance um, that are not legitimate. And the I, attacks of October 7th, where did they land for you? There has been um, almost exclusive focus on the attacks on civilian population centers and and the killings of um, civilians on October seventh, um, what is much much less discussed to the point of um, amnesia is that there were 
very extensive attacks on Israeli military and intelligence facilities on October 7th. I would make a very clear distinction between those two. And um, secondly, um, I'm not sure that I would characterize the efforts by um, Palestinians on October 7th to seize Israeli territory and Israeli population centers as in and of themselves illegitimate. You mean attacking Israeli civilians no, is legitimate? Uh, no, no, that's so not what I, didn't I said. I not understand what you said. I think th what you had on October 7th was an effort by Hamas to seize Israeli territory and population and centers. And kill civilians. That's not what I said. What I said is I think I, I'm, I'm, I would not describe the effort to seize Israeli territory as in and of itself illegitimate, as a separate issue from the killing of Israeli civilians where um, in those cases where they had been deliberately targeted, that's very clearly illegitimate. Whole families were slaughtered in kibbutzim. But I'm making... Think, oh, many wait, of them, wait, 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 many of them left-wingers, incidentally, think... who helped Palestinians <clears throat> go to hospitals in Israel and so on. Again... Even drove Palestinian uh, cancer patients to hospitals I, again, in Israeli... Again, I'm making a distinction But you don't seem here. to be very condemnatory of what the Hamas did. Well, I, I don't do selective condemnation. I'm not talking about selective. I don't do selective specific outrage. condemnation of this specific well, you assault know what, you on know civilians. What it is. You know, I, I would, I would, for example, uh, condemn Israeli assaults on civilians, deliberate assaults on civilians. Yes, I would condemn them, but you're not doing that. You know, with the Hamas. You know what the issue is? Um, well, I've been speaking in public now. I would say since the late 1980s and interviewed and so on. I have never, on one occasion, ever been asked to condemn any Israeli. When I've been in group discussions, those supporting the Israeli action or perspective, I have never encountered an example where these individuals are asked to condemn what Israel is doing. The, um, the, the demand and obligation of condemnation is exclusively applied, in my personal experience over decades, is exclusively applied to Palestinians no, this is and not, those it's well, Israel is condemned day and night on every television channel no, no, no. on every and, and, and has been I'm, for the I'm last I'm telling decade. you Professor about Morris, a personal yeah. experience Professor lasting Morris, decades. You said quote. Uh -oh. I hope, I hope, <laughs> oh no. I'm trying to uh, quote what you just said. <laughs> I shouldn't you said, have said anything at any time. <laughs> you should say uh -oh. Professor Morris. Yes. You just said I would condemn and I anytime condemn. Israel deliberately attacks civilians. Yes. Okay? The problem, Professor Morris, is over and over again, you claim in the face of overwhelming evidence that they didn't attack civilians. That's not true. I've said really? Israel has attacked Professor, civilians. Professor in Kibia, Morris, Israel attacked right, right, right. civilians. Right, right, right. Professor and I've Morris. written extensively okay, about it. I know that. In Kafir Qasim, they uh, killed uh, yes. civilians. And, I've and, and now that. let's, let's... So you're, you're, you're just okay, eliminating, okay. you're selecting okay. as... as as Stephen yeah, says, yeah. you cherry pick. Uh, if I were you, Before you, do you cherry okay, pick. Let's fast forward when you were an adult. What did you say about the 1982 Lebanon War? What did I say? You don't remember? Okay. <laughs> Allow me. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, it happens that I was not at all by any... I had no interest in the Israel-Palestine conflict <laughs> as a young man. Until the this 19, is true. until the nineteen eighty two Lebanon War. Yeah, uh, I lost the passage. I'll find it. Okay, real oh, quick. While he's right. searching for that, yeah, um, allow me. You that's bring good. up something that's really important that a lot of people don't draw a distinction between, in that there is just causes for war and there is just ways to act within a Correct. war, and these two things principally do have a distinction from one another. Correct. However. Um, while I appreciate the recognition of the distinction, the idea that the the cause for war that Hamas was engaged in, I don't believe if we look at their actions in war or the statements that they've made, it doesn't seem like it had to do with territorial acquisition. No, 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 no. I, the, the like point, taking land no, back. No, the point I was making was um, what was Hamas trying to achieve militarily on October 7th? And I was pointing out that the focus has been very much on um, Hamas attacks on civilians and atrocities and so on. And I'm not saying those things should be ignored. What I'm saying is that what's getting lost in the shuffle 
is that there were extensive attacks on military and intelligence facilities. Mm -hmm. And as far as the, let's say, the other aspects are concerned, um, because I think either you or Lex asked me about the legitimacy of these attacks. I said, I'm, I'm unclear whether efforts by Hamas to seize Israeli population centers in and of themselves are illegitimate, as opposed to actions that either deliberately targeted Israeli civilians um, or actions that um, should reasonably have been expected to result in the killings of Israeli civilians. Those strike me as by definition illegitimate. Um, and I want to be very clear about that. I have where illegitimate I, means you condemn them. Illegitimate means they are not legitimate. I, I have a problem condemning with, your side. Yes. No, not <laughs> condemning my side. I have a problem with selective outrage, and I have a problem with selective condemnation. And as I, I explained to you a few minutes ago, in in my decades of of appearing in public and being interviewed, I have never seen. <laughs> Um, uh, I've never been asked to condemn an Israeli action. I've never been asked for a moral judgment on an Israeli action. I'm, um, exclusive request for condemnation has to do with what Palestinians do. And, more, and just as importantly, um, I'm sure if you watch BBC or CNN, when is the last time an Israeli spokesperson has been asked to condemn an Israeli act? I've, I've never seen it. I don't think we condemn the Arab side either, though, right? I don't think there was so, any so, condemnation. There uh, no, much. but now that we're yeah. talking about Israeli victims, all of a sudden morality is, is Well, central. I, I think the reason why it comes up is because there's no shortage of international condemnation for Israel. As Norm will point out a million times that there are 50 billion UN resolutions, you've got Amnesty International, you've got multiple bodies of the UN, you've got now this case for the ICJ, so there's no question of if there's condemnation but, but, for Israel. Sorry, if I can interrupt you. In 1948, about... the entire world stood behind the establishment of a Jewish state in the entire no, no, world. No, except the Arab states and the Muslim states. Well, not the entire world. Okay, but I think you know what I mean by that. The Western dem democracies, that's what you're saying. Well, and then also, Western my quick democracies question, supported the establishment of Israel. My that's quick question was, saying. you said that you believe that, this is a very short one, you don't have to, it's just, you think that, um, you think that there's an argument to be made that the people in Gaza, that Hamas and Islamic Jihad, whoever participated, had a just cause for war. Maybe they didn't do it in the correct way, but they maybe had a just cause for war. Would I don't you think there's a maybe there. The Palestinians okay, you think they have... absolutely had a just cause for it. Yes. Do you think that Israel has a just cause for Operation Swords of Iron? No, of course not. Okay. All right. You can say your quote. Okay. Uh, first of all, on this issue of double standards, which is the one that uh, irks or irritates Mouin, you said that you are not a person of double standards, unlike people like Mouin. You hold high a single standard, and you condemn deliberate Israeli attacks on um, civilians. On when they occurred, yes. Yeah. And I would say that's true for the period up till 1967, and I think it's accurate you, uh, your account of the first intifada. There, it seems to me, you were in conformity with most mainstream accounts. And the case of the first intifada, you also used, surprisingly, you used Arab human rights sources like Al Haq, which I think Muin worked for yes. during the first intifada. That's true. But then something very strange happens. So let's illustrate it. Wait, there's something strange which happened is the Arabs rejected and, and, Okay, wait. Peace offers. Let, let, That's what happened. Uh, well, by accepting the Oslo Agreement. Yeah. Not the, okay. By rejecting he's talking about Camp David okay. and Tata. Uh, if we have time, I know the record very well. I'd be very happy to go through it with you. But let's get to those double standards. So this is what you have to say about Israel's invasion of Lebanon in 1982. You said Israel was reluctant to harm civilians, sought to avoid casualties on both sides, and took care not to harm Lebanese and Palestinian civilians. You then went on to acknowledge the massive use of IDF firepower against civilians during the siege of Beirut which traumatized Israeli society. Morris quickly enters the caveat that Israel, quote, 
tried to pinpoint military targets, but inevitably many civilians were hit. That's your description of the Lebanon War. As I say, that's when I first got involved in the conflict. I am a voracious reader. I read everything on the Lebanon War. I would say there's not a single account of the Lebanon War in which the estimates are between 15 and 20,000 Palestinian and Lebanese were killed, overwhelmingly civilians, the biggest bloodletting until the current Gaza uh, genocide, uh, biggest bloodletting. I would say I can't think of a single mainstream account that remotely approximates what you just said. So, leaving aside, I can name the books, voluminous, huge volumes. I'll just take one example. Now, you will remember, because I think you served in Lebanon in 82, am I correct on that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you will remember that Dov Yarmia kept the war diary. So, with your permission, allow me to describe what he wrote during his diary. So, he writes, the war machine of the IDF is galloping and trampling over the conquered territory, demonstrating a total insensitivity to the fate of the Arabs who are found in its path. A PLO-run hospital suffered a direct hit. Thousands of refugees are returning to the city when they arrive at their homes many of which have been destroyed or damaged, you hear their cries of pain and their howls over the deaths of their loved ones. The air is permeated with the smell right, of I think corpses. We... Destruction and yeah, yeah, death no, are continuing. Does that sound like the point you're making, Does that sound like your description of the Lebanon War? The, uh, forget my descriptions. The forget po- it? The, the point you're Words making... Words are in print. What, the, we can't no, just no, let me, forget Let me them. just finish my sentence. The point you're making, mm-hmm. it, it, which you somehow forget, mm-hmm. is that there are Israelis who strongly criticize their own side and describe how Israelis are doing things which they regard as immoral. You don't find that on the Arab side. I'm so, talking sir. about don't you, find that. Mr. Morris. Don't I'm not talking me. about Dev don't Darmia. Hear me out. I'm talking thing. about you, the historian. How did you depict the Lebanon Because I believe, I believe yeah. that the Israeli military tried to avoid committing a civilian casualty. So Dev, as, as, I, think they, as, well. Dev, as Robert, I think they tried all the, to do in all Gaza now. All by Robert Fisk and Pity the Robert Nation. Robert Fisk is yeah, an anti, all, anti-Zionist all the, I know, journalist. I know. Has always uh, been. Right. So th- that's why... Been. That's why you can say with such confidence that you don't commit, you don't condemn deliberate Israeli attacks on civilians. There weren't any. Because there weren't any. No, I didn't say there weren't yeah, any. Yeah, you and didn't? You, you agreed that I have condemned Israeli attacks yes, there are on theory. civilians. I never quarrel with facts. Your, your description of the 1982 war is so shocking, it makes my innards writhe. <laughs> and then your description of the second intifada, your description of defensive shield, when the, they when are, the Arabs they were are bombing, worse, is, when they Arab were suicide worse bombers, than apologetics. When Arab suicide That's bombers like were destroying Jew, Jews in masses no, and no, buses no, and in no, restaurants. No, That's you, the second you, intifada. You, do you remember that? You can try Suicide everything. bombers in Jerusalem's buses and I, restaurants. I am completely aware of that. But, you, you, well, but if you forgot the numbers, I don't, I don't forget it them. was three to one. The they, number, they killed yeah. mostly armed no, Palestinian I know, gunmen. That's, that's what you say that's in your I book. Say. That's what but I that's say. not what Amnesty International said. That's not what Human Rights Watch said. I don't said. remember what that's they said. Not, I do. No, no, that's not what I don't know whether their said. figures are right. I, listen, My figures are right. Listen, listen. In the Second Professor Intifada, Morris, some 4,000 pa- uh, Palestinians Professor were killed. Morris, Most of them armed people. You, and the Israelis, no, that's a, a thousand complete, Israelis were killed. No, Almost all per, of them no, uh, Professor, civilians. Professor Morris, fantasy, but I'm not going to argue fantasy. with here. Here's a simple challenge. You said not to look at the camera. Some scares fun. the people. I'll make the open <laughs> challenge. You are going to I, scare them. No. <laughs> Professor Morris. Open challenge. Words are in print. I wrote 50 pages analyzing all of your work. I quote, some will say cherry pick, but I think accurately uh, quote you. Here's a simple challenge. Answer me. 
in print. Answer what I wrote and show where I'm making things up. Answer I, me I'm a print. I'm not familiar. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. But I'm not familiar no, with that. That's no problem. You're a busy man. You're an important historian. You don't have to know everything that's in print, especially by modest publishers. But now you know. And so here's the public challenge. You answer and show where I cherry picked, where I misrepresented. Send me the article. And, fine, I will and, we, and then we can have a civil scholarly discussion. I'm not sure we will agree, even if we I, don't have to yeah, agree. Yeah, it's okay. for the reader to decide, looking at both sides, okay. where this truth stands. No, and and if I may ask, yeah. uh, it's good to discuss ideas that are in the air now as opposed to citing literature that was written in the past as much as possible, mm -hmm. because listeners were not familiar with the literature. So like whatever was written, just express it, uh, condense the, the key idea, and then we can debate the ideas. Or discuss no, there the ideas. are two aspects. There's a public debate, but there's also Written words. Yes, I'm just telling you that you, as a, a as an academic historian, put a lot of value in the written word, and Correct. I think it is valuable. But in this, he's context, incidentally not the only historian who puts value to words. Yes. I also do actually. Yes. Yeah, but just in, so we in don't more than just one or two sentences at a time. And, yeah. But this this in this context, uh, just for the educational purposes, well, the teaching people. Educational purpose is why would people commit what I have to acknowledge because I am faithful to the facts massive atrocities on October 7th. Why did that happen? And I think that's the problem. The past is erased, and we suddenly went from 1948 to October 7th, 2023. And there is a problem there. So yeah. first of all, you have complete freedom to backtrack, and we'll go there with you. Uh, obviously, we can't cover every single year, every single event, but there's probably critical moments in time. Can I respond to something relating to that, the Lebanon War? I looked at the book that he got this from and what the quote was from. Um, it sounds cold to say it, but war is tragic and civilians die. There is no war that this has not happened in, in the history of all of humankind. The statement that Israel might take care not to target civilians is not incompatible with a diary entry from someone who said they saw civilians getting killed. I think that sometimes we do a lot of weird games when we talk about international humanitarian law or laws that govern conflict, where we say things like civilians dying is a war crime or civilian homes or hospitals getting destroyed is necessarily a war crime or is necessarily somebody intentionally targeting civilians without making distinctions between military targets or civilian ones. I think that when we analyze different attacks or when we talk about the conduct of a military, I think it's important to understand, uh, it, like, prospectively from the unit uh, of analysis of the actual military committing the acts, what's happening and what are the decisions yeah. being made, rather than just saying retrospectively, oh, well, a lot of civilians died, not very many you know, military people died, comparatively speaking, so uh, it must have been war crimes, especially when you've got another side, um, I'll fast forward to Hamas, that intentionally attempts to induce those same civilian numbers, because Hamas is guilty of any war crime that you would potentially accuse, and this is according to Amnesty International, people that Norm loves to cite, Hamas is guilty of all of these same war crimes, of them failing to take care of the civilian population, of them essentially utilizing human shields to try to fire rockets free from attacks. Essentially? Um, essentially, yes. If, uh, me... As in, I'm just saying that yeah. essentially, yeah, as in terms of how international law defines it, not how Amnesty International defines it, but Amnesty International describes times of human shielding, but they don't actually apply the correct international legal you standard. You don't know what's the correct I know, absolutely. international You no, haven't but, but, no, I absolutely you do. You haven't Norm. I absolutely I, I, I do. Think, but um, but I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just you saying, believe it, it or not, Norm, the entire Geneva Convention is all on Wikipedia. It's a wonderful okay, website. You know but I'm just, saying, I'm just saying that on the Hamas side, if there's an attempt to induce this type of military activity, attempt to induce civilian harm, that it's not just enough to say like, well, here's a diary entry where a guy talks about how tragic See, these I think attacks the problem, are. I think the problem with, with, with your statement is that if you go back and listen to it, the first part of it is war is hell, civilians die. It's, it's a fact of life. And, and, and you state that in a very factual matter. Then when you start talking about Hamas, all of a sudden you've discovered morality and you've discovered condemnation and you've discovered intent. And, and, and you are unfortunately far from alone in this. 
I'll give you. I'll give you. You know who for me is a perfect example. Well, wait, hold on. We're just in response, we don't need examples. So no, I, I, wait, the, the, the false equivalency of the two sides is astounding. When Hamas kills civilians in a surprise attack on October seventh, this isn't because they are attempting to target military targets and they happen to stumble into a giant festival of people that. Well, they did they happen to stumble into it. They too. did, but they're, and they but, killed three hundred. Yeah, people. but yes. they did. But in when the, they yes. stumbled yes. into it, it wasn't yeah. an issue of trying to figure out a military target or not. They weren't failing in distinction. There wasn't a proportionality assessment done. It was just to kill civilians. Even the Amnesty International in 2008 and in 2014 and even today will Look, continue I don't to say think that there's, like I the types of attacks. I don't think you'll find anyone who will deny that Hamas has targeted civilians. Sure. You gave the example but there's of, a difference because of he, suicide bombings uh, during the Second Intifada. I mean, facts are facts. Sure. But and, I'm just saying that the Hamas targeting against civilians is different than the incidental loss of life that occurs when Israel does. How You know, genocide is the intentional mass murder. Genocide is a entirely separate claim. Yeah, right? but the idea that Israel is not in the business of intentionally targeting civilians, um, I know that's what we're supposed to believe. Um, but but the historical record stands no, um, no, that's very no, it clearly. I don't that's believe it does. Uh, you've written that's about well, it Well, oh, when you say historical, do you mean like in the 40s to the 60s or do you mean like I, I over the past? Like, the, like from the 30s of the last century to the 20s of this century. I, I just like to make, you know, you the way, the way you um, characterized it, I think the best example of that I've come across during this specific conflict is, is John Kirby. The White House spokesman. I've I've named him Tears Tosterone for a very good reason. Um, when he's talking about Palestinian civilian deaths, war is hell. You know, it's a fact of life. Get used to it. When he was confronted with Israeli civilian deaths on October seventh, he literally broke down but in tears. He understood that public. one is deliberate and one isn't. He understood that. No, that's what he tried to make us no, understand. No, no, he he's, he was speaking facts. The Hamas guys who attacked the kibbutzim, they, apart from the attacks on the military sites, when they attacked the kibbutzim, were out to kill civilians. Okay, let, and they killed let, let, family after okay. family, house after let's house. Say, the Israeli say. attacks on Hamas installations you know better. and okay, fire. You know I don't better. know better. Okay, no, let's, you don't know Israeli pilots. Take, that's the problem. I'm, thank God. You know, um, you, no, you don't know Israeli I know, pilots. Thank God. They uh, believe that they are killing Hamasniks. They're given certain objectives. I'm sure they believe it. And that's sure what they, they attack. It. And if the Hamas sure is hiding it. behind sure civilians, they civilians every die. Every time they target, as as every that. time they target a kid, I'm sure they believe it's Hamas. They when they kid, kids? yeah, when they, yeah, when they killed the four kids in the, on the, uh, they believe. Yeah, they I know they believe it. Even though they were you diminutive know size, you know even though they were nah, diminutive size. That angle, you don't see the size. Yeah, no, they saw it. You don't see the size. Let's leave it aside. Oh, I know here, what, he, what he's quoting here, here, but yeah. you've lied about this particular yeah. instance in the <laughs> oh, past. Mr. Those kids weren't just on the beach as is often stated in articles. Those kids were literally coming out of a previously identified Hamas compound oh, yeah, that they had operated from. They literally Mr. did. You Borelli, can Google it. You can Mr. Google Borelli, it. With all, due respect, with all due respect, yeah. you're such a fantastic moron. It's uh -huh. terrifying. That, that wharf was filled with journalists. There were tens, scores of journalists that was an old fisherman's shack. What are you talking about? It's so painful. Hamas naval. It's so painful to listen to this idiocy. <laughs> and to but be clear, on the other let's, side, let's, you're implying okay. that a strike was okayed okay. on the Israeli okay. side where they said, we're just going to kill four hey, Palestinian hey, children today for no hey, reason. Hey, do you believe that? Do you, know, do you, you believe that? Do you okay. believe that? Let's right, right. Okay. As you said, right, you there was believe? a hotel okay. of journalists. Do you think that they were out to kill four children? Here we go. will never answer that question. I will answer the question. Pilots were out to kill four children. I will even answer the question. And it was a proof because that was a strike. That was a drone strike. So it was a proof all the you way up the chain you, okay. that we're going to kill children want, today. Okay. We're going to kill Palestinian children You want children me to today. answer or do you want your motor mouth to go? Okay, answer. In 2018, <laughs> there was the Great March of Return in Gaza. By all reckonings of human rights organizations and journalists who were there, it was overwhelmingly nonviolent. It but organized resent, by the Hamas. What whoever organized it's organized it, by it, Satan. It, let's start Satan. with no, yeah, Hamas. Okay, no, by, by, Satan. Yeah. I, I agree. Let's let's go for the big one, the big Megillah. It's Satan. Okay, overwhelmingly organized, overwhelmingly nonviolent. Resembled at the beginning they the first bombs in, here and the there, first Intifada. They represent the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, not bombs, but they tried to they're, make okay. holes in the fence. Okay, okay, obviously. Let's continue. Yeah. So, but I'm not sure Israel behaved morally in that. Okay, respect. okay, no, no, no. I, I, okay, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. I'm willing to grant. Please, you that. 
please. I'm willing allow to me, grant Allow you. me to... You don't have to pursue allow it, because okay. I'm willing to grant... Allow me, allow me to finish. I, I don't know anything about this. I'd like to Okay. Hear. So, as you know, along the Gaza perimeter, there was Israel's best-trained snipers. Correct? I don't know best-trained. There were uh, snipers. Fine. Snipers. Okay. All right? <laughs> because, hey, report. laugh. It's hilarious. The story is so funny. You're lying about it. The Great so Russian Return had aspects okay. of violence to it. Okay. Before even the UN okay. says it themselves. Okay. 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 <laughs> but you, you only collect you're, what you're, the UN says that you like. You see, the problem, Mr. Morelli, is you don't know the ling English language. You don't I can read yeah, from the UN hear, website itself. In regards say, to the Great March of Return, they said, stop with your while the vast majority of protesters have acted in a peaceful yeah. manner, no, listen during to what most protests, did dozens did have approached the fence attempting to damage it, said, burning fires, throwing say, stones, and Molotov cocktails towards Israeli forces, okay. and flying incendiary okay. kites and balloons okay. into Israeli territory. Yeah. The latter results yeah, in extensive damage to agricultural land and nature reserves inside Israel and risk the lives of Israeli civilians. Some incidents of shooting and throwing of explosives are also Talk fast, talk fast. So I'm just trying to think that you're coherent. I'm just reading from the okay. UN. Yeah, but you I see, know you like them you got, sometimes. You got Only the when they agree with you, though. You got the months wrong. You got the months wrong. We're talking about the beginning in March 30th, 2018. You just described that March is okay. mostly peaceful. Okay, allow me to finish. So there were the snipers, okay? Now, you find it so far-fetched. Israelis purposely, deliberately targeting civilians? That's such a far-fetched idea. An overwhelmingly nonviolent march. What did the international it wasn't investigation? Wasn't a march. It was a campaign. Yeah, which whatever went you on want for, to call it. for months. Whatever you want to call for it. months. Yeah. What did the UN investigation find? Well, he just read it. it to you. I read the report. I don't read things off of those machines. I read the report. What did it find? Brace yourself. You thought it was so funny. The idea of IDF. Uh, targeting civilians, it found, go look this up on your machine. I already know what you're going to say. You're going to say it found that only children, one or two of them were, targeted were justified children, killings. Targeted journalists, targeted medics, and here's the funniest one of all. It's so hilarious. They targeted disabled people who were 300 meters away from the fence and just standing by trees. This is true. If, what if it's is true. true. Mm -hmm. if what uh, uh, just quick pause. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everything was fascinating to listen to, except the mention of hilarious. Nobody finds any of this mm -hmm. hilarious. And if and any of us are laughing, it's not at the suffering of civilians or suffering of anyone. It's at the uh, the obvious joyful camaraderie in the room. So I'm I'm enjoying it and also the joy of learning. So thank you. Can we talk about the targeting civilian thing a little bit? I think there's like an important uh, underlying, yeah. not necessarily that. I just, I think it's important to understand. Yeah, I think it's important to understand there's like three different things here that we need to think about. So one is a policy of killing civilians. Do we, so I would ask the other side, I'll, I'm going to ask all three because I know there won't be a short answer. Do you think there is a policy top down from the IDF to target civilians? That's one thing. Yeah. A second thing is. He is says yes. When I under, yeah, sure, okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, but then, then the second thing is, or there's, there's two distinctions I want to draw between. I think Benny would say this. I would say this. Um, I am sure undoubtedly there have been cases where IDF soldiers for no good reason have targeted and killed Palestinians that they should not have done, that would be prosecutable as war crimes, as defined by and the Rump Statute. And, and ICC. some have been prosecuted. Yeah, and, I, and I'm absolutely you sure. And your books, three, practically yep. none. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm According sure, you and your some, books, I'm sure, none. I'm sure that we would all agree for soldiers that that happens. But I think that it's important I think that it's important that when we talk about military strikes, when we talk about things especially involving mm -hmm. bombings or drone attacks, these are things that are signed off by multiple different layers of command, by multiple people involved in an operation, including intelligence gathering, including weaponeering, and there also have typically lawyers involved. When you make the claim that an IDF soldier shot uh, a Palestinian, those three people, the three hostages that came up with white flags and something horrible happened, I think that's a fair statement to make, and I think a lot of criticism is deserved. But when you make the statement that four children were killed by a strike, the claim that you're making, yeah, the, cl yes. the claim that you're making, the claim that you're making is that multiple levels of the IDF signed off I never, on just I, killing. I have no idea what That's great. If you don't understand the process, then let me educate well, you. you. I can tell you. I do the understand process. the process. I'm telling you. You're, you're, I'm trying to really, explain you right now. The IDF. Yes. I'm, no, I, it's you're basic military. You can ask idea. anybody that's Aside talked from about Wikipedia. You can, can you yes, tell you me can what talk your to knowledge people, of you the You can talk IDF to people who work Wikipedia, in the military. What's your knowledge of you the idea? Audience can look this up. Do you think that? Do you think that? Do you think that bombing and strikes are decided by one person? 
in the field. Do you think one person can I takes respond a drone to it? Yes, strike cells have entire higher. apparatuses that are designed to figure out how to strike and who to strike. So when you say that four Fine. children are targeted, you're saying that a hey, whole apparatus is trying to murder four Palestinian children. You make my argument better than me. Argument which is better a than ridiculous me. argument. Because, oh, really, that it's impossible at the command level. It's impossible at the command level. But you said that they couldn't have done it at the bottom if it weren't also you at the top. To, you don't understand so, the strength oh, of the I claim that you're please. making. You're with saying that from a top-down level that all lawyers, all multiple all commanders, and all these people Bernal, signed off on not tell me on what I don't understand. For Palestinians. It's true. Children. It's true. I don't spend my nights on Wikipedia. I read books. I admit that as a, a signal. It's a waste of time. Yeah, as, 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 as time I know, right books are a waste of time. With all due regard, well, there. Well, you, they are. The only I, thing you take from them are two or three quotes that you use. I completely respect. People, yeah. I completely respect the fact, and I'll say it on the air. As much as I find totally disgusting what's come of your politics, a lot of the books are excellent, and I'll even tell you because I'm not afraid of saying it. Whenever I have to check on the basic fact, the equivalent of going to the Britannica, I go to your books. I know you got a lot of the facts right. Benny Moore's books I would for never, the listener. I would never say books are a waste of time. And it's regrettable to you that you got strapped with a partner who thinks that all the wisdom, time. all, all the wisdom. Books. He didn't say they're yeah. a waste of time. I, I'd like to respond yes, to what you were saying. Yeah. Um, the, the, I think the question that, that we're trying to answer, I, I think, think you don't understand Israel, you know, I, uh, neither let me, let me finish, really please. understands Israel. I think we're now all, it works. I think we're all agreed yeah. that Palestinians have deliberately targeted civilians, whether we're talking about Hamas and Islamic Jihad today or I, I previously. Prefer word, I prefer the word murdered and raped rather than targeted. Target is too soft oh, for what the Hamas it. did. I'm okay. With I'm that. not. I'm not talking about. I'm um, talking about this now. Yeah, but I'm. I'm trying to answer his question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, historically, there is um, substantial evidence that Palestinians have targeted uh, civilians. Whether whether it's been incidental or systematic is a different discussion. I don't want to get into that now. For some reason, there seems to be a huge debate about whether. Any Israeli has ever sunk so low as as to target a civilian? I don't no, know. we've agreed. Both we said that. Agreed that I've just said that, that, that this has happened, happened here. And okay, there. and I think we've agreed on okay. that. Okay, I think um, what we're saying is it's not policy, which is what you guys okay. are implying that they kill civilians deliberately. If I understand you correctly, you're basically making the claim that. None of these attacks could have happened without going through an entire chain of command. For strike cells that are involved in like drone attacks yes. or plane attacks. Yes. Or, yes My understanding you. of the Israeli military, and you could perhaps, um, you've served in it, you would know better. It's actually a fairly chaotic organization. No, no, that's not true. Especially not the Air Force. Extremely, extremely organized. The Air Force well, works in a very organized fashion. As he says, with lawyers, a chain of command, and ultimately the pilot drops the bomb where he's told was to it, drop it. In Protective I, I, Edge, was that 200, 200 strikes in like 60 seconds, I think? I think at the opening of Protective Edge? Like, the yeah, the coordination between... You're talking about 2008. Uh, for, I think Protective yeah. Edge was 2014. But I'm just okay. saying that the coordination in the military is, is pretty well, tight. Well, my, my understanding of the Israeli military... It's very organized. Especially, it's is, very is, organized. ...is that it's quite chaotic, and there's no, no, also no, no, a no, lot of nonsense. testimonies from Israel. But be that as it may... Okay, I'm I'm prepared to accept um, both of your contentions that it's a, a highly organized Especially and disciplined the Air Force. Force. The Air Force, under any scenario, is going to be more organized than the other branches, and and you're saying such a strike would have been inconceivable. Um, well, I'm not necessarily or, saying inconceivable. I'm just okay. saying that like that would have required okay, like, the, the, you're, you're basically, murderous intent for so many. People yes, you're, I don't think good evidence has been presented to okay. say that that's the your your thing. basic claim is that we sh we we it would be fair to assume that such a strike could have only been carried out with multiple um, uh, levels of authorization and 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 signing off. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's accept that for the sake of argument. Um, we have now seen incident after incident after incident, after incident, where entire families are vaporized in, in single strikes. Who is We've in the families? Who lives in the house family inside? Members. No, family or next members. to the house family in which members. these uh, families are We killed. have seen incident after- uh, Do you know that Hamasniks weren't in that house? Do you, do you know, know that their ammunition were? dumps weren't Why in those houses? Why do I have houses? to prove a negative? 
You're saying that they deliberately targeted right. well, families. Omar, you know, if Israel you... wanted to kill civilians in, in, in Gaza, they could have killed 500,000 by now with the number of strikes they've done. And therefore... And the fact that they've actually, only killed a certain only, small number... 30,000 is a small number. Small yeah. number in proportion. You consider 30,000 a small number. in proportion yeah. over four months 12, probably, probably is, is an indication that it's targeted and that there are Hamas targets in these places. Okay. So I've I've given 12, you know thousand children is only and if that's the case, why is it Yeah, only? you said only. Only. No, uh, Professor Morris, here's a question for you. If we take every combat zone in the world for the past three years, every combat zone in the world in Vietnam okay, the Americans killed I said, a million I'm not people. About well, the they could have killed I wasn't, forty million. I wasn't yeah, what? I was again in the anti war movement. So don't the strap me. A million people uh, in Vietnam. Fine, fine. And and uh, thirty million Russians were killed. So in during World War II, so everything else is irrelevant. Okay. Not here's irrelevant. a question, Stick to Professor Mars. Professor Mars, here's a question. It's very perplexing. If you take every combat zone in the world for the past three years, and you multiply the number of children killed by four. Every combat zone in the world, you get Gaza. Okay? So when you what say- What is that first, supposed to prove? Okay, I'm going to, I'm wait, going to wait, tell you, just you're relying, shut up. You're relying and on tell Hamas you, numbers. You're, no, I'm not Hamas relying. Numbers I'm not relying on the numbers true. that everybody you know that. else, I'm relying on the numbers. Even if we take the numbers else, though, what does that prove? Those okay. are Hamas numbers. Okay. Okay. Which may not fine, be true. Fine. They could invent any, anything because you I know think, that they are I a mendacious we, I think organization. We all, I know mendacious. Believe me. You like words. Mendacious, mendacious as in mendacious the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Okay. So here's the thing. You say they could have killed 500,000, but they only killed only. That's your word. I'm no, they I'm only killed 30,000. You believe that they deliberately so here, target here, civilians. They okay. could have, would have killed many, no, many more. See, the fact no, is Mar that Professor they don't Morris, deliberately target civilians. Pro Professor Morris, for a, his, you don't understand for a historian, society. I don't, don't want to understand Israeli society. You don't know the truth. I don't want to. I don't want to get inside their heads. That's the problem. Ninety percent of a good, a good, a good, a good historian, a good historian yeah. tries to get into the heads uh, of there's a the, limit. the various there's a limit. protagonists. There's a limit. When ninety percent, when ninety percent of Israelis think that Israel is using enough or too little force in Gaza, I don't want to get inside that head. 40% think that Israel is using insufficient force in Gaza. I don't want to get inside that head. I don't want to get inside the head of people who think they're using insufficient force Historians against the population, no. against the population half of which is children. I don't want to get inside that head. But here is the point, because your partner wants to know the point. You don't understand political constraints. One of your ministers said, let's drop an atomic bomb on Gaza. <laughs> you think Gaza. he really meant that? He well, said it three you, No, no, no. Hey, it was said in a sort of a no, very Morris. questionable no, he way. After, he didn't say they should Professor drop an atomic bomb. He said it the day I'm not supporting him. He's an idiot. Morris, this minister, says, other, other, this minister other, is a minis other, yeah, messianic none other idiot. Than but, 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 but he didn't not, say drop an atomic none bomb. Under, none other than Israel's chief historian. The famed, justifiably famed Benny Morris thinks we should be dropping nuclear weapons on Iran. Iran has for years, its leaders for years have said we should destroy Israel. Mm -hmm. You agree with that? They've said we should destroy Israel. Israel must be destroyed. Have you, is that correct? This is what the Iranian leaders have been saying since Khomeini. I would say Iranian leaders have sent mixed messages. Okay, okay. But <laughs> some of them have said, including Khamenei If you don't and know Khomeini. their evidence, if you don't wait, know wait, their wait, evidence, wait. why are you laughing? This is like skepticism. It's very funny. <laughs> it's funny Iran because... Iran that supports Hezbollah okay, and the Houthis okay. and Hamas. Oh, yeah. They want wait, 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 wait. To the extent that the Houthis it's are trying... It's complicated. To the extent that the Houthis are trying to stop the genocide in Gaza... There is no genocide. They have the right to attack civilian ships. I, support I know you selectively the support international no law when it I agrees support. with you, okay. and then when it doesn't, you decide okay. to throw international law to the no wind. There's no genocide in Gaza. If you like, no yeah, hold on, read, Norm, Norm. Let me read what you said. Norm, Norm, stop, please. <laughs> Norm, just for me, please. Mm -hmm. Just give me a second. You said that there's no genocide going on in Gaza. Yes. Let me ask that clear question. Yes. Uh, the same question I asked on uh, Hamas attacks. Is there, from a legal, philosophical, moral perspective, is there genocide going on in Gaza today? 
is there a genocide going on in Gaza? Well, in several years, we will have a definitive response to moment, that question. What has happened thus far is that on the 29th of December, the Republic of South Africa instituted um, proceedings against Israel pursuant to the 1948 Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Um, South Africa basically accused Israel of perpetrating um, genocide in the Gaza Strip. On the 26th of January, the, um, uh, the court issued its initial ruling. The court at this stage um, is not making a determination on whether Israel has or has not um, committed genocide. So just as it has not found Israel guilty, it certainly also hasn't found Israel innocent. What the court had to do at this stage was take one of two decisions. Either South Africa's case was um, the, the equivalent of a frivolous lawsuit and dismiss it and close the proceedings, or it had to determine that um, South Africa presented a plausible case that Israel was violating its obligations um, under the Genocide Convention and that it would on that basis hold um, a full hearing. Now, a lot of people have um, looked at the court's ruling of the 26th of January and focused on the fact that the court did not order a ceasefire. I actually wasn't expecting it to order a ceasefire and I wasn't surprised that it didn't because in the other cases that, that the court has considered, most prominently um, Bosnia and Myanmar, it also didn't order a ceasefire. Um, and South Africa, in requesting a ceasefire, also didn't ask the court to render an opinion on the legitimacy or lack thereof of Israel's, um, of Israel's military operation. From my perspective, um, the key issue on the 26th of January was whether the court would simply dismiss the case or decide to proceed with it. And it decided to proceed. We and it decided to, to proceed. And I think that's enormously. I thought that was I think that's enormously. But you said they committed genocide. I, 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 you already I, I, said they committed genocide. I also like, I is said, committing genocide. But if I could just word. allow, allow me, allow me. That word. That's correct. Now, I, I don't run away. So, Norman, whoever. you did say Israel Norm, committing I genocide. Can you let Maureen yeah. finish? Yeah. Well, the end of the story is you specifically asked whether I think Israel is committing genocide. I explained formally there is no finding. And as you said, we won't know for a number of years. And I think there's legitimate questions to be raised. I mean, in the Bosnia case, which I think all four of us would agree was clearly a case of genocide, the court determined. You mean by the Serbs? Yes. Yeah. In, in the Bosnia case, the court determined that of all the evidence placed before them, only Srebrenica qualified as genocide, and all the other atrocities committed did not qualify as genocide. You know, international law is a developing uh, organism. I don't know how the court is going to respond um, in this case, so I wouldn't take it as a foregone conclusion um, how the court is going to respond. But, but Norman my, has determined already. I have too, because you're asking my personal yeah, personal opinion. opinion is also so true. as as a matter of law, I want to state very clearly, it has not been determined and won't be determined for several years, based on my um, uh, observations and and the evidence before me. I would say it's indisputable that Israel is engaged in a genocidal assault against the Palestinian people which in the is, Gaza which Strip. Which is the PLO line. Genocidal. Yeah, with the program, the PLO is long past. What, what, okay, the what Palestinian defines, authority. I, as, as, as you were saying, um, genocide is, is, is not a body count. Um, genocide consists of two elements. Um, the destruction of a people in whole or in part, so in other words, you can commit genocide by it's killing 30,000 people. It doesn't have, well, five probably is below there the is threshold. A of yes, but I think 30,000 crosses the threshold and not reaching 500,000 is probably relevant. And the second element is there has to be an intent. In other words- And you believe there's an intent? Yes, I think if, if there is a, any other plausible reason for why all these people are being murdered, 
it's not genocide. And as far as intent is What about concerned, hiding behind a human shield? You don't think that's the reason for them being killed? Well, let's get the intent part out of the way first. Um, South Africa's- uh, Forget South Africa. They're not the party. Well, I'd, I'd like to finish. They're just like pro-Hamas government. I, I, that's, that's got nothing to do with anything. I think they're pro-Satan as well last time No, I they're pro-Hamas. Um, you know, for some reason, you don't have a problem with people being pro-Israeli at the time of 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 this. But if they support Palestinians' right to life or self-determination, they get demonized and delegitimized as pro Hamas. They supported an organization which murdered twelve hundred people deliberately. That's my but, problem. But supporting a state that has murdered thirty thousand. But they haven't, because these are thirty thousand. Okay. are basically human well, shields just to get back. used by the Hamas, okay. and, and in which the Hamas wanted okay. wanted are, killed. Okay, they wanted could, them killed. All right, if I the could, Hamas wanted these people sure. killed. If I could just get, you don't yeah. think they wanted them killed? They no, didn't I provide don't. them with shelters. They build tunnels for their fighters, okay, but not one shelter for their own civilians. You asked me about intent. Of course they want them killed. Okay, you asked me about intent. And the reason that I bought in um, the South African application is because it is actually exceptionally detailed on intent by quoting numerous- All sorts of idiotic ministers in Israel. Well, yeah, including the prime minister, the and defense the minister, minister didn't say the kill, chief of staff. Didn't say genocide. No, the no he said Amalek. According to Asa he said Kasher, Kasher use the word according Amalek, to Asa Kasher, the Hamas are a really according well, to Asa Kasher, Kasher, if, if I may. He's, according to Asa Kasher, the philosopher of Asa the IDF, Kasher, yeah. yeah, he said that well, <laughs> Netanyahu was, uh, was uh, avowing genocide. So now, he's an idiot. So he the didn't say he's an idiot, but he yeah, is yeah. Uh, past it. So the, the, the reason I raised the South African application is twofold: yeah. Hamas or no Hamas. It's exceptionally detailed okay. on the question of on the question of intent. And secondly, when when the International Court of Justice issues a ruling, individual justices um, have have can the right can give their own opinion. Yeah, yeah. And I found the German one to be the most interesting on on this specific question, because he was basically saying that he didn't think South Africa presented a persuasive case. But he said their um, their section on intent was so overpowering that he felt he was left with no okay. choice but to vote with with the majority. So I think that answers um, the intent part of your question. So. For the ICJ case that South Africa's brought, I think there's a couple things that need to be mentioned. One is, and I saw you two talk at length about this, the plausibility standard is incredibly low. The only thing we're looking for is a basic presentation of facts that make it conceivable, possible, that- Plausible. Pl plausible, yeah. which legally, this is- obviously below criminal conviction, below- yes, of course. Um, Yeah, below- Think of it as an indictment. Sure, possibly, mm. maybe even a, a lower level than even an indictment. So plausibility is an incredibly low standard, number one. Um, number two, uh, if you actually go through and you read the complaint that South Africa filed, um, I would say uh, that if you go through the quotes and you even follow through to the source of the quotes, the misrepresentation that South Africa does and their case about all of these horrendous quotes in my opinion, borders on criminal. Well, um, 16 ICJ judges disagree. That's with fine you. if 16 ICJ judges disagree, must but be I'm going to give- incompetent. <clears throat> you know, they could be, but- it must be, um, oh, even the American judge, she must have been awful incompetent if she was unable to see the misrepresentations that Mr. Bunnell, based on his Wikipedia entry, was able to find. So this is based on the official ICJ mm -hmm. report that was yeah. released. I'm not I sure read if you read it. the entire thing I or read not. Okay, Every that's great. Aspect. Did you go through and actually identify any of the sources actually, for the underlying quotes? Actually, brace yourself for mm -hmm. this, and Mawin could confirm it. Mm -hmm. Yaniv Kogan, an Israeli, and Jamie Stern Weiner, half Israeli, they checked every single quote in the Hebrew original, and Yaniv Kogan loved the guy. He has terrifying powers of concentration. He checked every single quote. Is that correct, Mawin? Mm -hmm. And Jamie checked every single quote in the English, in the context. And where there were any contextual questions, they told us. I think they found one. Yeah, I think they found one. So I do not believe that those 16, 15 judges, it was 15 to two. 16 to two, I think. There are 15 on the court plus two, so it's 17, so it's 15 Maybe. to two. 
Uh, I don't think those 15 judges were incompetent, and I certainly don't believe the president of the court, an American, would allow herself to be duped. Okay. Because okay. Well, let's, well, you let me, might, well, let me read. You might recall, Mr. Burrell. Let me read. Let me read. Let me read. I think I want to read one. Let him read. Sure. So this was uh, taken from the uh, from the South African complaint. There's tons of these, mm -hmm. but so here's one. Uh, in the in the complaint for the ICJ, they said that on the 12th of October, 2023, President Isaac Herzog made clear that Israel was not distinguishing between militants and civilians in Gaza, Correct. stating in a press conference to foreign media in relation to Palestinians in Gaza, over one million of whom are children, quote, quote, it's an entire nation out there that is responsible. Yeah. It is not true, this rhetoric about civilians not aware, not involved. I saw that. It's reference. absolutely not true. And we will fight until we break their backbone, end quote. If you actually go to the news article that they even state, they even link it in their complaint, the full context for the quote was, quote, it is an entire nation out there that is responsible. It's not true, this rhetoric about civilians not being aware, not involved. It's absolutely not true. They could have risen up. They could have fought against that evil regime, which took over Gaza yes. in a coup d'etat. But we are at war. We are defending our homes. We are protecting our homes. That's the truth. And when a nation protects its home, it fights, and we will fight until we break their backbone. He acknowledged that many Gazans had nothing to do with Hamas, but was adamant that others did. Quote, I agree. There are many innocent Palestinians who don't agree with this, but you have a missile in your goddamn kitchen and you want to shoot it at me. Am I allowed to defend myself? We have to defend ourselves. We have the right to do so. This is not the same as saying there's no distinction between militants and civilians in Gaza. His statement here is actually fully compliant with international law to the letter, because if you are storing mili uh, military supplies in civilian areas, these things become military targets and you're allowed to do proportionality assessments afterwards. So if this is supposed to be one of many quotes that they've shown that is supposed to demonstrate uh, genocidal intent intent, but it is very easily explained by military intent or I, by a conflict between two parties. I saw that press conference. Wait, let, let me just say something. All of this talk is a bit irrelevant because it sounds, it may sound to the listeners that the the court in the Hague has ruled that Israel is committing genocide. No, I think but it we, hasn't. It hasn't. No. It's just is going in the next few years to look at the whole subject. Okay. There I has been no, de that. no there, determination there are, at all. Okay, fine. And as, uh, as Stephen says, uh, some of the quotes are not exactly accurate quotes okay. or taken it's out of context. Total mischaracterization. The, the, yes. Okay. It is correct, as Muin put it, that it'll be seven ye several years before the court makes a determination. And my guess and, is that it will determine there was no genocide. I we can only That's guess. my I, guess. I, I yes, no, I'm just giving, I, giving I, you my I, guess. Uh, I can't predict. I got it all wrong, actually, as Maureen will attest. I got it all wrong the first time. I never thought the American judge would vote, again, would vote in favor of plausibility. So you admit that you were I, wrong? I, yeah, of course. I think I tell Maureen <laughs> twice a day I was wrong about this and I was wrong about that. I'm not wrong about the facts. I try not to be, but my speculations, they can be wrong. Okay, leaving that aside. First of all, as Maureen pointed out, there's a difference between the legal decision by the ruling, and an independent judgment. Now, South Africa was not filing a frivolous case. That was 84 pages. It was single. Even 84 it was pages single can be space. frivolous. It, it takes an hour and a half to read. Single, it was not a it, massive uh, case. It was single spaced, and it had literally hundreds of it, footnotes. It can still be with, frivolous. With it's of possible. Course, of course, it but could this be. one wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I read the report. To tell you the truth, I followed very closely everything that's been happening to October 7th. I was mesmerized. I couldn't believe the comprehensiveness of that particular report. Number two, there are two quite respected judges, excuse me, there were two quite respected uh, experts of international law sitting on the South African panel, John Dugard and Vaughan Lowe. Vaughan Lowe, as you might know, he argued the war case in 2004 before the International Court of Justice. Now, they were not, uh, they were alleging genocide, which in their view means the evidence in their minds, we're not yet at the court, the evidence in their minds compels the conclusion that genocide is being committed. I am willing, because I happen to know Mr. Dugard personally and have corresponded with Vaughn Lowe. I've heard their claim. I've read the report. Uh, I would say they make 
a very strong case. But let's agree plausible. Now, here's a question. If somebody qualifies for an Olympic team, let's say a regional person qualifies for an Olympic team, it doesn't mean they're going to be on the Olympic team. It doesn't mean they're going to win a gold medal, a, a, a silver medal, or a bronze, bronze but medal. they can swim. That's what you're saying. No, I would say that's a very high bar. You're saying they can swim. They even qualify. They can swim well swim. enough to have a realistic prospect yeah, 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 of yeah. winning a medal. So, to even make it to plausible. That is not true. Even, that is not it's what a plausible very means. High, it is absolutely right. not. Mr. You're dead Borelli, wrong. Mr. Borelli, please don't teach me about the English language. So the declaration I said, of judge I point, said plausibility is, not is the asked same in the concept phase, as qualifying. The court is not asked at this present phase of the proceedings to determine whether South Africa's allegations of genocide Didn't are well founded. That? They're not uh, well founded. That? They're not even well founded. Did the court I, is you said that plausible was a I, high I, standard. It's absolutely I, not. It is uh, a misrepresentation of the strength of the case against Israel, just like the majority not, of the quotes they have every, in this case are. And also, you okay. said it was an extremely well-founded case. They spend like one-fourth of all of the quotations, some even pulled from the Goldstone report, that try to uh, uh, that actually deal with the intent part. Mm -hmm. Which is, by the way, I think you guys, I don't know if you use the phrase, the dolus specialis, that the intentional part of genocide. Sorry, I don't know the, that the, term. The, 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 I, think it's, I think it's called dolus specialis. It is the most important part of genocide, which is proving the special, it is a highly special intent to commit genocide. It's that's possible that Israel could- That's mens rea. No. The mens rea, they, yes, I understand the state of mind, but the, the, mm -hmm. and for genocide there is, it's called Major. dolus specialis. It's a highly special intent. Mm -hmm. Did you read the case? Yeah. Uh, it is Mr. a highly Pirelli, special intent. I'm to be going to ask you again. Genocide. Yes. Please stop displaying your imbecility. Okay. I'm do sorry not, if you think do, the declaration do, of the put judge is imbecile. Don't put on public display that God. you're a moron. At least have the self possession to shut up. Did I I'm read the case? I'm putting my display Mr. on camera. Mr. You're putting yours in Mr. books. Mr. Okay? I read the case around four times. I read all of the the uh, ma the majority opinion, the declarations. I read Aaron Barak's declaration. Then why are you I lying know, and saying plausible is a high standard? Because I said, even reaching the benchmark of plausibility is a very high standard in the world. It's the equivalent of a regional player qualifying for an Olympics. It's still two steps removed. You may not be on the team and you may not get a medal, but to get qualified, which in this context is the equivalent of plausible, you must be doing something pretty horrible. But the court, as it happens, the court, and as it happens, the court Professor rule, Morris, there was no as, as, as it, as that's it, what the court will rule. As, Remember what I just told you. The court I don't rule, expect to be no even genocide. around when the court reaches its final decision. Why? Why? It'll take a long, long time. Two years, three No, years. I don't think it'll take two or three years. I but, mean, the yeah, Bosnia, okay. which was an admittedly a special type of case because they were accusing Serbia of sponsoring the Bosnian Serbs, that took, I think, 17 years from 90... I assume they'll take two or three years. But you, the point you're making... So this I'm is a legal that something yeah, yeah. horrible must be happening to even achieve. It's horrible. It's a war. Yeah, <laughs> I know. it's true. Yeah, horrible. Yes. But I think they weren't. They weren't rendering a ruling on a war. They were rendering a ruling on a genocide. And I think I think the here. suggestion. And they said it was plausible. Said, well, they also we'll said it was plausible about, that Israel is committing a military I, I, operation I, as well. Yeah, but I think the problem with with your characterization is you're saying in so many words the South Africans basically only have to show up in court with a coherent right. statement. Right, that is correct. In today's they needed, atmosphere, that's probably they, correct. They, they needed to do a lot more. Not much they, more. They needed Not to. More. They needed the to American persuade judge? today's atmosphere. The American the judge. The, they today's needed to atmosphere. persuade. Judges go according to what the majority want. Want to hear yeah, it. but they he needed president. They needed to persuade the court that it was worth investing several years of their time in they're hearing well this case. To a, so they, they're, they, they're well paid whether they, they take this to. case or not. I mean, you know, they have a they have a full docket um, whether they accept or reject this case. And I, I think I don't think we should remember um, what I just said. They won't rule there was genocide. 
Remember what I said. Also, I recommend well, people actually read the case and follow through a lot of the quotes. That they just okay, don't show okay, genocidal Mr. intent. Morelli, I don't think so the Israeli Minister Mr. of Finance Morelli. on the 8th of October, 2023, this is taken from the ICJ, <laughs> this is from South Africa's submission, uh, Bezalel Smotrick, I can't read this, stated, uh, there you go, okay, at a meeting of the Israeli cabinet that, quote, we need to deal a blow that hasn't been seen in 50 years and take down Gaza, end quote. But again, if you click through and you read the source, their own linked source, it says, as per this own source, Quote, the powerful finance minister, settler leader uh, Bezalel Smotrich, I can't pronounce this, demanded at the cabinet meeting late Saturday that the army, quote, hit Hamas brutally and not take the matter of the captives into significant consideration, end quote. Quote, in war as in war, you have to be brutal, end quote. He was quoted as saying, quote, we need to deal a blow that hasn't been seen in 50 years and take down Gaza, end quote. You can't strip the quotation of Hamas, a entity oh, that you're at war with, and then pretend think, that there's genocidal intent. That's not how it's That's not genocidal intent. Take, so when the Ukrainians say, we need, when the Ukrainians yeah, say we need to defeat Gaza. Russia, that's take not genocidal. No. When no. Ukraine says we need to defeat uh, Russia, yeah. is that genocidal? Here's, here's Do they mean one. killing all Russian Professor, citizens? Professor Mars, here's, here's another here's one. Here's when, ridiculous. when the defense, yeah, ridiculous. Yes, ridiculous. Uh, the American judge. He also doesn't determine policy. The American judge, the American judge, Red. You are holding the American judge to, to you know. Well, she was the president. Because he'll so appeal to president. authority when it agrees okay. with him, and we won't uh, deal with the actual yeah. facts of the matter. I, ever. Okay. The American judge read several of the quotes. Look at the American okay. pre- Supreme Court today. They may support Trump. Okay. It shows you okay. how okay. worthy the American Morris, judges Professor are. Morris, without going too far afield, if you heard a statement by the defense minister, the defense minister said, we are going to prevent any food, water, fuel, or electricity from entering Did they Gaza. Do that? He wanted to I, make did Israel do that? Sure. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering. What he said. I, I'm it, asking isn't you. Isn't Israeli government oh, I, wait, policy? But we're talking about statements now, intent. How would you interpret that? After 1,200 of your yeah. citizens are murdered the way they were, I would expect Let's, extreme statements okay, by okay. lots of politicians. But, 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 but you're f- by lots of politicians. But you don't accept extreme but that's Palestinians. That's not Israeli policy. Wait, but you don't accept. What he said isn't Israeli policy. But you don't. They let please. in water. They let in gas. I'm sure they let you in don't accept. But you don't accept I'm extreme true. Palestinian statements after they lost their entire country, not just 1,200 people. That's a good point. No, no, it's a good point. And on that. <laughs> Uh, on on that moment, brief moment of agreement, let's just take a quick pause. We need a smoke break. We need a water break. We need a bathroom take break. Take down Gaza is not a genocide. Defeat Russia means. is a genocide statement. What does statement. take down Gaza mean? We went mean? to war with Iraq and we wanted to destroy Iraq. That was take a genocidal statement. There's a reason why genocide is so is such an importantly guarded concept, and it's not oh, to, I, to condemn I, every nation that goes I, to war. Mr. I, Wait, you do I know how to so pronounce my name. Are you mispronouncing it intentionally? So yeah, he made you into an Italian so all the time. Sure <laughs> by your solicitude for international law. You should try learning it sometime. It would help you sort out a lot of the civilian deaths. Unfortunately, 15 judges disagree. You could keep citing the judges. You should actually try reading the actual statements.